Everybody wants their opinions to be heard, yet they do it in the worst way possible, and that has happened with Dragon Age the Veil Guard. The activists that are working on this project could not seem to keep their real lives out of the content they were creating, and now they're getting absolutely destroyed by the internet for it. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, over the past few months, we have been talking about Dragon Age the Veil Guard and ultimately roasting it because we knew that it was going to be filled to the brim with identity politics and because of the leaked images and videos and also the shill media reviews talking about how you can make your character trans, you can make your character non-binary. It's only solidified all of our worries. And just as a heads up, I will be streaming this game starting tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, because I want to be better than journos. Journos love to talk about games that they don't play in totality, and I think that that's unfair. And also, if there are, say, a hundred of you in chat, I highly doubt you guys are going to be buying the game, meaning we are costing this company money, and that is ultimately what I want to do if this game is bad. And with all of the articles and all of the posts on social media that are going around, it also looks like they are being damaged in more than one or two ways because we have outlets like Forbes saying Dragon Age the Veil Guard's clumsy, preachy political messaging does more harm than good. We have libs of TikTok making posts about it and it's getting millions of views. I mean, across the board, they are getting absolutely annihilated, except for by the very people that are shilling for them. Now, this is an article written by Eric Kane, one of the only decent journalists at Forbes, because he never says that you should like a piece of content simply because it pushes a narrative, which is just definitely a thumbs up at this point. We need more journos like him. He says the best way to convince someone of your own point of view is generally not to bash them over the head with a kujal, though that seems to be the preferred approach in modern political discourse and, alas, in entertainment. The culture being what it is has lost all sense of subtlety. This is something that I have talked about so much when it comes to Dragon Age the Veil Guard and, yes, entertainment in totality. We used to have writers who could get a message across, but in a subtle way that did not bash you over the head and wanted you to walk away with only one singular opinion. That is something that is so sad to me now, because if you look at the hero's journey, for example, sometimes you have a reluctant hero. Some Somebody who does not want to actually play the, their part, who does not actually want to do these things, maybe because they feel like they cannot, that they're not good enough. And then they have to grow into that person and they have to find their selves. They have to, you know, kind of solidify their own sense of identity, which, yes, typically is what you know, transgender and non-binary stories are, and they can do these things in a very subtle way where people could walk out of that story taking it in many different ways. But the art of subtlety, yes, is lost now, and it is so sad to see, and it is a real shame that the developers of Bioware have also gone in this direction. I've already posted my impressions piece about the game, he says, which I've been pleasantly surprised with so far. Yeah, this is why I stream these games, because while I do not think that they're going to be particularly amazing. It's still only fair that I play them and I give them a chance because I'm talking about them. And then you guys could end up buying them if I'm having a really great time and you think it's worth your money or you could save your money. At the end of the day, you're an adult that can do, you know, what you want with your funds. But on the flip side, I think it's only fair that I play it. Though in his piece, he noted that so far he hadn't encountered anything overtly preachy or that one might describe, um, you know, as overly woke. The game is diverse. It gives you options to play as male, female, or trans. But in my time with it, this felt mostly like giving players more choice and freedom. And I'm all about that, especially in RPGs. But he th then goes on to talk about the one major clip that has been circling social media in the scene in the question below. One character 
character misgenders another to atone for this sin. She does a set of push-ups and then lectures the other characters on how to apologize properly. This has to be one of the cringiest clips I've seen in a while. And keep in mind, Dustborn only released a couple of months ago, and we thought that that game was going to top it all. But this one is extremely bad. I'm sure you've all seen it because it's going around online, but I am going to play just a small snippet of it. Pounding that snake's nose, she's still holding the ruby in her other hand. Maker's panties, I was so proud. Oh, uh, um. Ah, shit. They, they're still holding it. Sorry. This is the dialogue that they thought people wanted in their dragon fantasy game. So first of all, you should not have to apologize for misgendering somebody. Okay, that's a ridiculous concept. But this is so absurd because not only do characters have to apologize for misgendering your character, but they also, of course, use terminology in this game, like non-binary, like transgender. It is fucking absurd that we are adding in modern day terms to a fantasy game. This is so not shocking, though, given the state of the industry, because so many people within it are lunatics. They are radical leftists, and this is like a religion to them. They're like a cult, right? You all have to follow their mentality. You have to use their terminology, and they do go on social media, and they will cancel people who misgender, and it's like this character is feeling so bad because she's been in like this bad situation before where she knows she's hurt somebody's feelings. Boo hoo. It's such a sad thing to see in an established franchise like this because so many people had high hopes and expectations for a game like Dragon Age the Veil Guard and it's like that all went down the toilet because they decided to hire activists. Bioware has had a lot of failures over the past couple of years with titles like Anthem and Andromeda and I just don't see a way that they are going to recover from a game like Veil Guard and sure I'm certain I'm certain that it will sell a certain amount because of uh, brand recognition and franchise loyalty, but I don't think it's going to do the gangbuster sales they expect. Now, maybe it will. Maybe everyone will end up loving this game. I want titles to be amazing. I want people to enjoy them, but judging by the reaction on social media, a lot of people are roasting them. Like, even Elon Musk is saying things like, what a travesty. People are saying it's insane to have this in a video game. Looks like a corporate DEI training video. I 100% agree. This is the stupidest, cringiest shit I've ever seen. That's enough video games for one day. There are a lot of people out there who still do not know how infected the video game industry is with DEI initiatives and all of these activists. And it is really great to see so many more people become aware of these situations because, you know, Forbes put up this article, Libs of TikTok shared this. It's got millions and millions of views and a lot more people are paying attention. And then you have images like this going around where it says, Tosh, it, I don't want to be that. You're allowed to feel things. Our team is with you. You're in control here. I feel like that too. I mean, these are like the worst dialogue choices possible. And it is very, very obvious that they were more worried about putting identity politics first over genuinely great storytelling. So like I said, I will be streaming it, giving it a chance. It's not looking very good for Dragon Age of Veilguard right now, though, as basically everybody on the internet, except for the shills and the SJWs, are roasting this title. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. It if you enjoyed it, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.